Native American Ethnobotany. Examining plant use by societies in various parts of the world is a large and complex line of study known as ethnobotany. In North America, much of our traditional plant knowledge comes courtesy of the American Indians who relied on medicinal plants for a large part of their health care. The use of medicinal plants varied widely across many tribes, and frequently knowledge of the use of these plants was culturally guarded. Melvin Gilmore's early 1919 report regarding plants of the Missouri River region stated, In the earliest times, people had to possess a practical working knowledge of plants with regards to food. Plants were identified either as edible, edible when all else was gone, or dangerous based on experience by the people of the region. In the process of this experimentation, it was discovered that some plants, though not useful as food, could be used to alleviate ailments of the body. As such, plant lore and utilization became tied to individuals within a tribe and carefully passed on. The first plant in our series is an Echinacea augustifolia, also known as the purple Kansas coneflower. It has a fleshy taproot, which was widely used by the North American Plains Indians for its general medicinal qualities. In contrast, Echinacea purpurea, also known as the per eastern purple coneflower, has a fibrous root and is more widely spread throughout the U.S. The leaves of Augustifolia are narrower than purpurea. Native Americans learned of Echinacea by observing elk seeking out the roots and consuming them when sick or wounded. They subsequently identified these plants as elk root. In the 1930s, Echinacea became popular in both Europe and America as an herbal medicine when a Swiss herbal supplement maker was erroneously told that Echinacea purpurea was used to prevent colds by Native American tribes living around South Dakota. Although Native American tribes did not use Echinacea to prevent the common cold, some Plains tribes did use Augustifolia to treat some of the common symptoms of a cold. The entire echinacea plant is used medicinally, both dried and fresh. Common preparations include making a decoction or infusion of the roots and leaves, making a poultice a part of the plant, juicing the roots, or simply using the leaves as they were. The next plant is actually a shrub, Hamamalius virginiana, also known as the common witch hazel. It is a deciduous shrub that is common to the eastern and central United States. Common witch hazel has a spicy fragrance when blooming, while the Asiatic species are fragrance-free. Another species, Hamamalius vernilis, with distinctive orange-red blossoms, is native to the Ozarks and flowers the end of December. If grown further north, vernal witch hazel will bloom early in spring. Witch hazels are also called snapping hazel because in the fall, when flowers appear, the seed capsules split open and shoot their seeds, sometimes 20 or 30 feet. The Mohegans are believed to be the first to show English settlers how to use Y-shaped witch hazel sticks for dowsing, which was an ancient method for finding underwater. The Native Americans created witch hazel extract by boiling the stems of the shrubs, a decoction which was used to treat swelling, inflammation, and tumors. Early Puritan settlers in England adopted this remedy from the natives and its use became widely established in the United States. In the 1840s, Theron Pond of Utica, New York, spent time learning of the Oneida Indians' usage of the plant. He created a preparation called Golden Treasure in 1848 and this still extraction is today produced in Connecticut as Pond's extract. There are many different varieties of sage in the United States. Salvia apiniana, also known as white sage, is an evergreen perennial shrub native to the southwestern United States. White sage has been widely used by American Indian peoples on the Pacific coast of the United States. The seed is a primary traditional ingredient in a staple food known as panole, and the dried leaves are used as an incense for ceremonial purposes known as smudging. 
Overharvesting for the beauty and wellness industries is threatening the survival of white sage. Native Americans have begun pushing back on ceremonial cultural appropriation in order to protect this plant and others, so future generations will have ongoing access to their plants. Salvia nulifera, known as black sage, also lives in this region. The leaves and stems were made into a strong sun tea by the Chumash and rubbed onto painful areas or as a foot soak. The bark of Salix alba, also known as the white willow tree, as well as other willow species, have been used by Native American tribes as medicine for a multitude of ailments. The inner bark was most often used, made into a tea and drink, though it was also made into a poultice to cover the skin over broken bones, or used to wash skin and hair to promote skin growth and hair growth. The vast differences in the use of willow is due to the many ways to repair it, and these different preparations allow for it to be utilized in multiple ways. For example, the Thompson people would make a concoction of wood, willow, soak berry branches, and anything weeds to treat broken bones, However, if they wanted to treat cold, they would make a decoction of red willow branches and wild rose roots. Willow bark contains salicin, a com compound similar to aspirin that has anti-inflammatory and analgesic properties. Acarus calamus is also known as sweet flag. Calamus is one of the oldest documented medicinal plants mentioned in medical papyri from ancient Egypt between 1300 and 1200 BC. The North American species is found stretching across the northern half of the U.S. and into Canada and as far south as North Carolina. Its main habitat includes wetlands and the plant flourishes in muddy, wet, sunny locations. Calamus leaves and rhizomes contain a volatile oil that give a characteristic odor and flavor similar to spicy wood. Many tribes use the bulbs and leaves from this plant for various medicinal reasons. Sweet, sweet flag was one of the most widely and frequently used herbal medicines among the North American tribes. The usage of sweet flag served as a remedy to almost any minor health issue, which prompted different concoctions of calamus to be found in everyday positions of American Indians and was also used as a method of currency. From the common cold heartburn, sweet flag was the answer. Asclepius tuberosa is also known by most as butterfly milkweed or pleurisy root. Native American uses of butterfly weed center around the roots of the plant. The root of the butterfly weed was commonly chewed or pulverized and then used to tend to bruises, cuts, or sores. It was also an important element in mixed root remedies. Butterfly weed was known as deceiver and when combined with the root of ginseng, man in the ground, and sweet flag, formed a remedy for major cuts and wounds. These four were commonly used together and were highly valued. Native Americans chewed fresh root from the plant to help treat bronchitis, pleurisy, and other respiratory illnesses. Others preferred to make a tea or tincture and ingest it that way. Butterfly weed helped to ease pain and breathing difficulties caused by those illnesses by loosening mucus, soothing inflammation, and helping with long-term recovery. This particular version of milkweed is not a preferred host of monarch butterfly. The caterpillars can be raised on it successfully. It has a poor source of cardinalid content, so it's not really good for bird predation or parasite brilliance. It looks very similar to and is often confused with common milkweed, but butterfly milkweed can be distinguished by its large number of flowers and hairy stems that do not produce a milky liquid when broken. Thank you for your time. Following are the works that are cited. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. Thank you.